now we're live. Thank you so much for being here with me, Talal. Thank you so much. Like I said before, uh, when I first came in contact with your platform, I was super excited and super surprised. And uh, honestly, I love what you're doing and I appreciate the invite. Man, I appreciate you and uh, it's, it's amazing how many cool people I'm meeting since I started this. Like I, I was saying, I think in my last podcast, I started out, you know, interviewing friends, you know, people I know around me and then they're like, you got to talk to this guy. If, uh, I, you know, I got the jura to like contact that guy. Let me try talking to him. And I talked to them and they tell me about others and it led to you. So I far. I'm yeah, so, so happy, happy that you took that step and uh, that's what jiu-jitsu does, right? Good conversation yes. with different people. That's it, bro. That's it. It's such a beautiful martial art because you're you're training a very different spectrum of jujitsu, which is I'm I'm so excited to talk to you about. But that's the beauty. Even at that spectrum, we're linked through the yeah. Middle East, through jujitsu, through friends of friends that train MMA, whatever, and then we end up linking with each other. Um, I wanted to get something clear, Talal. You grew up and lived your whole life in Lebanon, right? Yeah. So I grew up and I lived in Lebanon my entire life, apart okay. from one year where I lived in Singapore. And I was training at Evolve MMA. Ooh. And one year where I was living in Thailand and I was training at AKA. What, what year was it you were training at Evolve in Singapore? Uh, Evolve was, I think, around 2016, 2017. Shit, you just missed my professor because uh, my professor, Rodrigo Shimbika, he was, te- he was a professor at Evolve in Singapore for for what, five years, six years, I think. Uh, and he left there 2013. Oh, so I think I just got in when he got out. Man, that gym is crazy, huh? Yeah, honestly, it's uh, beautiful facilities, a lot yeah. of uh, instructors, athletes, and like uh, it, speaks one, it speaks wonders. Yeah, I was shocked. It's like a shopping mall for martial arts. It's huge, yeah. it's clean, it has everything, right? It's everything you can imagine and wish for, they have it. Were you training jujitsu there? Uh, I was training MMA at first, but then okay. it turned into jujitsu as well. So. Okay. I started out when I first got into Evolve. I wanted to train Jiu Jitsu, but I was never training in the Gi prior to that. So Ooh. I was more interested in the No Gi because of MMA. Yes. And I needed like two or three stripes to get into the No Gi classes. Makes sense. But I just got into Singapore and I didn't want to waste any time. So oh. I, was, I tried to talk to the professor. His name was Teco. And uh, I asked him, I was like, I've been training MMA for a couple of years and I would love to just do the No Gi. And uh, he went for a trial class, and then he was like, all right, you can join the Nogi class. And that's then, cool. Very interesting. You, you have to have three stripes, you're saying? So that's how it started at first when I got there. So I don't know if it's because I was 19 at the time, so they were taking a little... I honestly don't know why it was like this, but uh, mm. there were some precautions. that Because they didn't want somebody who just got in to yeah. go into Nogi, and then, you know, Nogi is a little more explosive. Okay. So uh, they don't want anyone to kind of like tweak or injure themselves right away. Don't you think that's a bit of an old school mentality though? Like that no gi is dangerous? Probably because uh, at the end of the day, I see it, they're all jujitsu. But mm-hmm. uh, like when I was in Thailand, a uh, professor there called Marcio, he said mm-hmm. something and I'll never forget it. He said, they're all jujitsu, but there's three types of jujitsu. There's okay. gi, no gi, and MMA. Mm-hmm. And then... Yes. You have to play and compete and train in each one specifically. Yes. Then obviously, they complement each other. But uh, very true. I was more interested for MMA. And no gi. Very true, man. Like that's the thing. Like most people would say that no gi is more dangerous for a beginner. But I'm like, we're no gi our entire lives. You put exactly. on the gi when you start jujitsu, so that's more fucking dangerous for me. <laughs> exactly. Right. So, but but like, man, I'm so happy with how much jujitsu is changing across the world. You are part of a system that came late in the West, all right? So it's interesting that you're actually like developing 10th Planet System in the Middle East quite early, let's say, in its career. Right. So I was fortunate enough when I was in Singapore. When okay. I was in Singapore. So a month after I get there, they introduced the 10th Planet System. And it was headed by Rick Marshall, which is an Eddie Bravo black belt. Ooh. And at the time, I was super interested in jiu-jitsu, but I never knew what 10th Planet was. And I've read about it, and I've seen the videos, but I've never done it. Okay. So uh, I was fortunate enough to start training with him. And honestly, like, from the first class, I saw how structured the system was, and uh, it grabbed me pretty quickly. And then since then, I've been training more and more and more. So 
that's how it started. Did, did you have any previous conceptions of 10th Planet or you didn't even know what it was? Honestly, like I've seen the videos, the Twisters, the Lockdown, yeah. right? Eddie Bravo and Hoyler Gracie, ADCC. Yeah. I've seen the videos, but I've never experienced this firsthand. Interesting. Because, you know, like, let's talk first the Brazilians. A lot of the Brazilians had their heart and soul invested in Hoyler Gracie, right? They started, most of them started because of the Gracies. So their hearts broke a little bit when that happened. And right. they're like, Poha, this gringo comes in and, and does this sneaky move. I'm sure if he tries again, it wouldn't work. And it worked the second time too. But um, I think a lot of them until today resist 10th Planet like they resist footlocks. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's definitely that mentality where it's Yi versus no Yi and there's this big debate. And yeah. And Eddie, you know, when he first opened up Tenth Planet, he got a lot of hate for doing so because people mm. thought that he was abandoning or like discrediting Jiu Jitsu for abandoning the Gi. Yeah. Right. But then what he was trying to do was improve Jiu Jitsu for MMA because he saw that there was a small gap, which was the Gi that you train in. And then when you go to fight, it's not there. Okay. So. I feel like that gets lost a little bit in history, but uh, yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, it's all jujitsu, right? So, you know, it, it's funny, Talal, you bring this up because uh, Gordon Ryan uh, just threw some shit in Kanan's way. Uh, did you watch the last uh, BGJ bet event? I did not, honestly. Uh, okay, so, so uh, Gordon Ryan fought Kanan. Uh, sorry, sorry, excuse me, not Gordon Ryan. Um, uh, Roberto Abreu, cyborg, fought Kanan. Right. Kanan right. from Atos. And uh, recently, there's been a lot of shit going around between Gordon Ryan and Kanan talking on social media. Kanan lost that fight to a heel hook. And right. uh, when he got heel hooked, it was like he was reaching for a gi. Like, it was like his muscle memory did what he should have done in gi, but it didn't work out in no gi. And that is the prime example of what Eddie Bravo thinks, is that you try to reach for the gi and it's not there. So at first, it started with uh, closed door in MMA. High level kids to people off their backs, they couldn't control the posture. And like early on when people were starting to catch up to what Jiu Jitsu was, right? Okay. So it started with the idea of how can I control the posture a little better off my back defensively, right. not get hit and then implement my game. And then from there, that's where the system kind of flourished. And then. Interesting. So, so just for everybody listening that watch, knows Jiu Jitsu or doesn't, Posturing is a problem. Closed guard is when you're off your back, and this is what popularized jiu-jitsu, right? You can fight somebody decently off your back, but the biggest problem is if you can't hold their head down and their tricep and they posture, that's when they punch you. So exactly. what exactly does the 10th planet do that defies this uh, difficulty? So in my eyes, at least in my game, and then in my students' game, and most of the 10th planet practitioners' games, you see the rubber guard come up way more than anything else, mm -hmm. right? There's an entire page dedicated for it, rubber guard yes. assassins. And yes. you can see how effective the move is with different people across different competitions. Okay. Right? So the rubber guard, basically what that does is once you break down the posture, instead mm -hmm. of controlling the head with your hands, because you don't have the gi anymore, yeah. you're going to angle off to your hip and then you're going to use your leg as a rubber guard, right? As a yeah. high guard to control the posture so that they can't go up. Behind so, their neck. Basically. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I see. So here, here's the first problem that comes out. All right. And then this is perfect, man, because I can hit you with the misconceptions and you've been training it long enough to break them. Um, the first misconception is the name rubber guard. Right. Most guys past the age of 25 will hear rubber guard and be like, screw that shit, man. I'm not rubbery because of the name. It sounds like you have to be flexible to do it. How flexible right. do you have to be? And then even to your point, when you see all these crazy guys pulling off rubber guard, you see like this guy's super flexible. There's no way I can do this. All right. So the trick is you got to angle off to your hip. You can't play it off your back. Yeah. Right. Once you start playing it off your hip and then you start using the proper angle. See, it's the same with the triangle, right? You can yes. close the triangle if you're straight up parallel with the person. It's right. not going to work. But if you angle out and you're perpendicular, then that's where the beauty happens. Same right. with the regard. You just have to get the angles right. I see, because there's a lot of people with popped LCLs trying to play rubber guard when they never learned it. And I'm yeah. one of them. <laughs> so, I, man, this is, the sh this is the thing, okay? I roll with a bunch of killers most of the time, and they're mostly all black belts. So when I try to come with a new technique, it's more, I'm trying to surprise them exactly. so that I put them off their game. But man, I don't know, Shosarli, like, I don't know. I watched a few rubber guard videos, and I, I watched Mission Control, all right? right? 
So that's I, where I wanted, it that's where it starts. So I wanted to get them in mission control, which is basically like a a triangle with their both are, their arms in, right? I, I angle my leg, leg inwards and I catch my heel. That's exactly my, So if you triangle all the way in and you're trying to go for the submission, which is eventually the arm bar, yes. that's the torture. But, but, but the, correct me if I'm wrong. So the mission control, you bring your leg over from behind and you catch it next to their head. It's not right. a triangle, but it's right. just to hold them, right? Right. And from there, the series of attacked us. Man, that didn't fucking work out. <laughs> I was flat on my back. Straight up and then the knee. Bro, he just started laughing. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> that's, that's where I experiment these things. I, I think I need to, to hang out with people like you to learn the 10th planet a bit more. Um, so walk me through, like, you, you push off to a hip and your goal is to break their posture with your leg. Um, is there any other advantages of the system? So basically what that does is one, if you're in guard, closed guard, and you have the gi, yeah. you have a bunch of lapel chokes, a bunch of sweeps, you have a, like, honestly, the possibilities are limitless. You can pull I'm them from the collar, yeah. Right, you have a lot of stuff you can work with, right? Okay. And then turn that to no gi. I'm not saying that you don't have as many options there, but sure. normal full guard, to me, like, I always find my options more or less limited. Mm. especially what you said like i always roll with killers and i try to surprise them mm -hmm. so that's how the planet started for me i was going up against guys who were training way longer than i was especially right. in thailand and singapore and then i had to learn these tricks right uh -huh, yes and get the step ahead <laughs> harami jiu jitsu <laughs> right. so i had to experiment with everything as well and yeah. what i came to realize over the years is it all comes down to the details and once you figure that out you can do it effectively and you can do it safely, which I think is the most important part. I like that. So when when you trained in Evolve for that, was it a seminar? Uh, no, so I moved to Evolve for around one year where okay. I was doing university. It was my first year of university. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, I was training at Evolve and I was there for like a year. So uh, but, I was but when, in I see. Sorry, but when you got exposed to 10th Planet, was it in a seminar in Evolve or was it? Uh... So when I first got to Evolve, they had, if I'm not mistaken, Chet, Checkmat and uh, Hanzo Gracie affiliations, right? Okay. And then a month after I was there, they introduced that 10th Planet Singapore is opening up. Okay. All right. So Rick comes in. I start with the 10th Planet classes. Wow. And then that's how it started. Okay. So you you stuck with 10th planet since then and um I, I know that you did a seminar with eddie bravo i saw on your uh, instagram right w so was that two actually oh, okay I, and the first one was in singapore so my year was up in singapore i was ready to go back to lebanon for summer vacation and then mm -hmm. i find out that eddie bravo danny prokopos which is his first black belt and sean mm -hmm. bollinger which is his second black belt are mm -hmm. coming to all for one week to do a yeah. seminar for one week straight and it was a month after I was supposed to go back to Beirut. So I called my parents. I was like, guys, I have to stay here. This is super important. I can't miss it. Wow. And then we did the impossible to stay there. And then I'm thankful for that. That was my first time. Meeting him. You were studying in Singapore? Yes. What were you studying? So I was following a Bachelor of Business in the year. All right. So how much of this Bachelor are you using right now? So... Honestly, I've always been business oriented, but okay. uh, university and sitting in a classroom and it wasn't yeah. doing it for me, especially like with the, let's say, path that I was given, right? So after the first year and after things got shaken up a little, I started implementing everything into my day-to-day -day life. And honestly, I found out that it was way more effective in learning and gaining experience. 100%, man. 100%. Yeah. So I have my own spin on education but i right. mean i graduated management marketing i got certifications and and masters and they're all in the drawer somewhere i don't even remember where all my degrees are i never use them never right, all right. of my degrees my my useful degrees <laughs> came from jujitsu on the mats came from businesses that i actually tried doing not the things that i studied so now w what is it that you do are you 100 percent jujitsu or do you work and jujitsu so right now I'm committing solely to developing Tense Planet, Tense Planet Beirut, and uh, honestly, like Lebanon, we need a jiu-jitsu scene, you yes. know. And uh, this is what I'm working towards, and it's taking up a lot of my time. 
yeah. it's a tough country, but uh, yeah. Yeah. thankfully, I've uh, I've done what I've never thought I can do in the past year, and it's just the beginning. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get into that for sure. We're, I want to talk more about like your tenth planet experience, but just to tell you right now, I I said this before. And I'm gonna say it a million times. Lebanon has the biggest potential in all of the Arabic countries. I'll say it a million times and over the roofs. It just needs time to figure shit out. But oh my goodness, man! When Lebanese people get a hand off on jujitsu, and when yeah. they, and the MMA Lebanese guys get a hand on tenth planet jujitsu, oh my goodness, man! It's gonna be a huge deal there. Uh, you're, you're on the right direction and you're one of, you're the first bro like how how i'm i'm gonna be the first shawarma place good luck i mean you know i'm gonna be the first manaish place man it's all been done jujitsu is a baby so you're on the like the pinnacle of something that has huge potential and for whoever doubts you know look at abu dhabi look at dubai look at the countries that adopted jujitsu early it's amazing yeah honestly like uh what Dubai and what the UAE has done for jiu-jitsu and like especially implementing it into the school programs and like oh, we yeah. have kids right now growing up doing jiu-jitsu which is like what I think is the best thing a kid could do focus so their life and like okay. so true man limitless so you, you do this seminar with Eddie Bravo you you hang in there and you bite the bullet on summer vacation was it worth it it was definitely worth it so uh okay the last day of the, so the seminar was for one week, right? right? So it started on Monday and then it finished on a Saturday. Okay. Right? By Saturday, by Eddie's last session, so we're done with the seminar, and then that's the day I got promoted by Rick Marshall, which is Eddie's black belt and the guy that was running Tenth Planet Singapore. I was promoted to purple belt, oh. right? And then after that happened, I talked to Eddie and then we had a conversation, and I was super interested with Tenth Planet. And I was uh, so sad that I was going back home and then it wasn't going to be there anymore. Yeah. So I talked to Eddie and Denny. I was like, guys, why don't you come to the Middle East, do seminars, do something? Like, we need you. Right. right? And then one thing led to another. And then with time, Eddie said, and he suggested, why don't you open up your own gym? And then with time, that's how it started. Man, amazing. It's, um, it's things falling in place for the right person at the right time, you know? <laughs> It's meant to be. I want to ask you about the belt. How do Tenth Planet promote? What What is the like ceremony look like? They just give you a belt and you walk away because you're not wearing the gi. Right. So like everything, like jujitsu, right? When you get promoted, it's up to the instructor. So every instructor, I think, and I believe sees it different. But in our eyes, it was uh, in my eyes and in Rick's eyes and in everybody that, has, that I've met's eyes, it's always been if he deserves that belt skill-wise. Mm-hmm and technical-wise and understanding of jiu-jitsu, then okay. there's that belt. There's, it's as yeah. simple as that, right? And then that keeps going up. So what do you do with your belt as a 10th Planet guy? All right, so we never wear it. Personally, I never wear it, but we have a bunch of like prank crash guards. And oh, okay. But then again, like the belt, to me, to my eyes, my students, it doesn't mean anything, right? You have to roll with the person. You have to yeah. see what that exchange is like. And then yeah. the belt's just extra. I see. See, okay, this is another, not misconception, but this is where there's a rift between the jiu-jitsu community and 10th planet. People want everything to be all-encompassed. When, they want, when people say jiu-jitsu, they're very, uh, how can I say, protective about that word. Right. A lot of people look at it as the martial artist. Links to Japan, Bushido, you know, all of these principles and you wear the gi and you bow and us and all this stuff. When they see 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu, it's like an abandonment of all of the martial artist philosophy and just a focus on the grappling. And then you go the next mile, which is submission grappling in the US now, not this, not just 10th Planet, which I believe Eddie Bravo Invitationals and the 10th Planet system were the birthplace of submission <laughs> grappling. But today, you see a lot of people abandoning jiu-jitsu as a martial art and looking at it as a submission sport. Where do you stand? Are you on submission so, sport or are you martial art? So martial art, what it does, like uh, what you'd want it to do, right, is to kind of take charge. I'm not going to say take charge, but to help you take charge of your life and uh, yes. bring you that uh, martial arts inner peace that everybody's looking for, right? Yeah. And, and let's take it to both extremes. And then the other extreme is the competition sub only. Let's get yeah. the money. Let's win the championships. All yeah. of that, right? So I believe that whoever goes into jiu-jitsu, he kind of puts himself on that line, whether whichever extremes he wants. Okay. But uh, to me, like, 
I found jiu-jitsu and martial arts at the right time. So uh, I see what it does and I see how it can help people. And honestly, yeah. all I've been doing since day one is just trying to bring jiu-jitsu to more people. Yeah, yeah. And I, I love it, man. I, I know exactly what you mean. And uh, a lot of the people that are close to us have a difficult time understanding this. And to them, it's like, basketball. Like, why is he playing this with this ball? It's not basketball. It's There's a lot. I swear to God, there's a lot more to it. It's so difficult. <laughs> So this is why I love what you're doing, right? Because uh, yeah. I feel like it's the middle ground between people who are interested, yes. but are not going to go to the gym. They just want to listen and understand a little more about jiu-jitsu. So exactly. I feel like it's kind of like the Trojan horse, right? Exactly. It's, it's the gateway drug, right? Everybody's right. online. They're listening to people on YouTube. Take a little bit of this weed and go into coke later. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like start, start a little bit with me listening to this funny stuff and then go strangle people in the real world. Um, who do you think is your target? Not to call them your target, but like your demographic. Let's be business people now. In in Lebanon, who should be training jiu-jitsu? Look, honestly, I feel like uh, Lebanon has been going through a very tough time. Oh, yeah. Past years, as everybody knows, especially the past couple of months. Mm -hmm. So uh, I feel like everybody needs kind of something to vent. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying jiu-jitsu is it. I want everybody to find something. But in my experience, what it's been, it's been martial arts, and I've seen it with different people. So yep. uh, when I was in Singapore, for example, that's what was driving me crazy. Like, uh, I wasn't seeing just these rough people with uh, bad backgrounds that were coming into MMA and Jiu-Jitsu and Muay Thai. I was seeing these doctors and these lawyers and these engineers and these yes. pilots, and it was like, it was mind-blowing. They show up for a 7 a.m. class in their gi, take it off, and then shower, put on their suit, go to work, and then blow wow. my mind. Wow. You know, like not, not to go off on a total tangent now, what you said just rang so many bells. People in life, they're looking at developing themselves and reaching heights, right? Jiu-Jitsu offers the fitness side, offers the martial arts side, but there's a side that a lot of people overlook. They might know it, they might not, but once you point a finger on like, damn, that's true. When you train Jiu-Jitsu, it doesn't matter what social class, what religion, what demographic, what anything you're from, you have the potential to network mm -hmm. really closely with people from all industries. Here's the thing. So very funnily is a lot of the business I've, I've had in real estate <laughs> came out of a jujitsu role. I went to a gym in a country I was visiting for real estate work. Mm -hmm. I'd roll with a guy. And all of them are like, so what do you do? I see real estate. One guy turns out he does real estate. And because we just rolled and strangled each other for an hour, there's a little bit of trust that we established. It's right. different than going and grabbing a coffee. You've, exactly. you've just choked him and he tapped. He choked you and you tapped, right? Exactly. So, so you got this, the tension out. This is one of the best parts for me, especially with 10th Planet, because what mm -hmm. I feel 10th Planet does, I'm not going to say better than everybody else, but uh, okay. what I think they do really well is there's this sense of community and different gyms, where different people drop in to like, let's say 10th Planet Beirut drops in yeah. at 10th Planet Berlin and then they yes. drop in Amsterdam. And then, you know, so it's this chain of different people and different gyms That's worldwide true. where you can just hop in, you're gonna meet a bunch of people who love jujitsu mm -hmm. and then it's awesome, it just goes from there. Is it a unified system that you're teaching across all 10th Planets? So there's a bunch of unified stuff, right? Like the rubber guards all there, the lockdowns all there, the truck, everything's there. But uh, like anything and any other affiliation, I think people add their small takes and uh, okay. right, their small details to it. Sure, sure. So like that's the thing because you have Gracie Baha. This is the only other example I can think of in jiu-jitsu that has a system, right? Um, they have the books. They have, okay, the Gracie University. There's another right. example. Uh, but... Uh, so I don't know why anybody that does jiu-jitsu, when we say Gracie University, everybody laughs. <laughs> they get a smirk. Because they were the first people to push it online, right? University for this. <laughs> exactly. They took it to an academic level. Right. God bless them. But um, so when it comes to 10th Planet, do you have a curriculum or is it each instructor has their flavor? All right. So the good thing about what Eddie's done is he's developed these warm-ups. Mm -hmm. Right, so the warm ups go from A to H, different sets, different series. Okay, you get from A1 to A4, B1 to B4, all the way up to H. So, think of these lockdown, uh, think of these like sets and warm ups as like different, uh, let's say, 
chain of moves, right? Okay. So a different flow, a different, a different goal in mind. So everyone's different. A, let's say, is Granby's. B is Hail Mary's. So like crazy submissions you can get out of anywhere. C mm. is pressure passes. So this is kind of unified where a lot of moves kind of flow in. And it's okay. an amazing way to kind of teach people how to get into jujitsu and kind of have like an overview of everything. I see. I see. So what, let's, let's talk a little bit more 10th planet. What are the fundamental positions? Like if you want to talk about foundation for us, hip escape, close guard, whatever, normal right. jujitsu. 10th planet, what are the fun, foundational movements? I'm not going to say that the foundational movements are going to change. They're all there because at the end of the day, you're still doing jujitsu, right? The basic yes. mistake that you don't want people to be doing, whether in the gi or in MMA or in no gi, right? The basic yes. mistake that you don't want to be doing, you're also going to be doing them if you have that 10th planet style in mind. The only difference it does for me is it adds more stuff, right? So I'm open to everything that can improve my game. Yes. And uh, 10th planet has been the style that I favorite so far. Have you tried applying your 10th planet system in gi or do you just not train gi? Honestly, I've never trained in the gi in my life. Whoa! But, uh, I don't see why I wouldn't in the future. I see. Okay. Well, it's it's like, how can I explain it? Do you watch TV shows? All right. I'm gonna go with you. All right. Do you watch TV shows? Yes. Like Netflix or okay? Have you right. seen Game? Have you seen Game of Thrones, for example? Right. Okay. So right. imagine you never watched Game of Thrones and you held yourself from watching it, okay? Because you were into like Vikings or whatever other TV show. And then after years of milking all of these TV shows, now you can watch Game of Thrones. When right. everybody watched it and they wish they could watch it again, now you can watch it for the first time. So very nice, man. You can enter Gi with all of this experience and enjoy it from the beginning. So for now, I feel like I still want to compete. I still want to train in no Gi, MMA, everything. So time is, uh, especially mad time, is kind of, a little more what you make it to be. So I like to focus more on what I be doing realistic okay. in competition. Got you. And you compete in MMA as well? Uh, yeah, so I've done a couple of MMA fights. I've had a couple of amateur fights when I was younger. And okay. Then I had two professional fights and uh, looking to do so again in the future. Okay, so you are planning an MMA route to give it a shot. Definitely, definitely. <clears throat> Where are you training your striking? So... Like I said, I've jumped around through so many gyms over the years. Yeah. When I first started out, I started out martial arts when I was maybe nine years old in Taekwondo. Oh, no. So I okay. loved the entire striking aspect and the kicks and everything. Okay. And then I went to Thailand for a month when I turned 18. My parents sent me there. And uh, that was the first time I was exposed to real martial arts uh, with proper system, proper guidance, proper athletes. Because everything I was getting back in Lebanon at the time was kind of like watered down, if you know what I mean. Yeah, commercial. So, yeah, so it was early days as well. So nothing sure. was established. Nothing was there yet. So especially that, like I said, I wasn't in Beirut, right? I live a little higher up in the mountains. So I was searching for this gym that I was hoping to find, but I never found it. And then when I went abroad and I got exposed the first time to what it was, that's how nice. everything started leveling up. Now, that's when it snowballed. So right. you said your parents sent you to Thailand. Was it a boys trip that turned into a Muay Thai trip or did your parents actually so, send you? My parents were living in Bahrain at the time okay. or uh, Erbil at the time. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah. And uh, they sent me to Thailand on my 18th birthday because they wanted to do something big for me and they felt a little guilty that they weren't here. So they knew I was into training, into martial arts, everything. And they were okay. like, what's the best way to give him something that he's going to enjoy. And Man, I, props I, to your parents. Yeah, I wouldn't be here without them. So it's amazing. Bro, you lucked out in terms of parents at the right age, man. Because most parents would be like, Habibi, you want to go to Ayanapa with your friends? Okay. <laughs> and then you go and like coke and weed, like people do the yeah, stupidest shit. My mom hated it, right? She was always scared. I mean, hey, and jiu-jitsu and getting punched in the face. And she never yeah. liked it. Bro, yeah, Leila, yeah, Leila, <laughs> getting, yeah, Leila, breaking your arm. Then honestly, right. like, there's so many, I look back at my life, man, and I dodged bullets because my parents, sweethearts, right? But they didn't know martial arts, MMA, anything. Haram, like sometimes it's a push-pull relationship. They feel like, like they want to give you some space, right? 
So they'd send me to like a place. Now I'd never send my kid there, <laughs> you know, because I, I know what happens there. But as a kid, I'm like, oh, thanks, Mama Baba. Your parents did you a solid sending you to get that experience at that age. And, and that set the tone for you, right? Yeah, definitely. That's what uh, led me to really understand what martial arts was. That's when I was first exposed to jiu-jitsu. I got my yeah. ass kicked by everybody. Boom. And, uh, what was it? AKA Thailand. Okay, nice. Okay, so it was pretty cool. It was, it was an amazing experience. I started meeting a lot of like high-level guys, right? People yeah. would walk into the gym every single day, like big fighters. And you'd spar with them, you'd roll with them, you'd wrestle with them. So, so why AKA, why didn't you try like Tiger Muay Thai? Was it something specific? Uh, when I was in Lebanon, I was training with this coach and uh, like my parents back and forth with him, he kind of recommended it. It was a new okay. at the time. And okay. in my eyes, I thought that Tiger Muay Thai might already have an established fight team and like established fighters. So AKA might be like a little smaller where I can- Yeah, more chance. Work, yeah. yeah, exactly. Work better privately with higher, 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 higher level people. I get you. Did you ever get a chance to train with guys like Tariq Sleiman and these guys? Tariq Sleiman, unfortunately, I've never had the chance to, to train with him. Okay. But for example, when I was in AKA, I drove with, uh, have you seen this big fighter from Iran, Amir Ali Akbari? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> guy, right? Mike Swick, uh, Mark Hunt much... would come in every now and then. Oh, shit. How much did you weigh? Came in. How much did I weigh? Yeah. Around 77. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> yeah, bad matchup. Oh wow, man! Allah bravo alik. It was good though, dude. It would be it would be something to grab all of these big names that are sprouting out of Lebanon, right? The guys that are pioneering jujitsu, whether here, US, everywhere. Like, cause there's guys like Daniel Hilal, there's Saeed Khatib that, with Beyond Submissions. Uh, there's Mirella and all these people. Thought it, Sleiman. I'd love to do like just a super fucking seminar. Agree, right? man. Let's do it. Man, it's it's a you know the rising it. the rising tide raises all boats, right? Right. Br bring in the floodgates, man, because anybody that gets exposed to that seminar, they're gonna get tenth planet. They're gonna get beyond uh, submissions. They're gonna get a mix between black belt, uh, Brazilian black belt, Brazilian top teams. Excuse me, Le uh, Canada, and Tarek Sleiman's craziness. I, let's do it, man. I I definitely once this whole shitstorm of Corona is over, Agreed, we should man. definitely work it out. So in my eyes, like you said, let's get it to everybody. Let's get jiu-jitsu to everybody. And uh, yeah, man, that's what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to do. I don't know if you've seen. I hosted a seminar last year. I saw. I brought in two black belts from the U.S. and toured them around Lebanon. And, Amazing. Uh, so just an attempt to get people more into jiu-jitsu, and it's working honestly. So it's taking its time, but it's working. What, what was was it? Their first time to Lebanon? Yeah. So so there was Rick which was okay. my instructor, and there was Matt. Wow. And then apparently Matt had Lebanese origins, but he's never been to Lebanon. Man, right? you, so, you Lebanese guys, man. I swear to God, Lebanon's everywhere. Matthew, bro, there's, no, there's nobody who doesn't have Lebanese origins. I agree. I agree. They go out and search for... <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Matt, he's the assistant instructor at 10th Planet, Alabama. Right? So with okay. uh, Brendan McGarrigan, which in my eyes is one of the best confined gyms in the world. So he came into Lebanon, Rick came into Lebanon. I showed them around the country. They enjoyed it, they loved it, they loved the food, wow. which I'm sure you do. Wow. And uh, we did some jujitsu, it was awesome. So uh, when you did a seminar, was it just your students or did some random people come? No, so I opened it up for everybody, which is what I think everybody should do. So okay. uh, I, had, I had a kid, Aisa, uh, eight years old, fly in from Kuwait. Right, right. The seminar, yeah, which blew my mind. Honestly, I had the guy from the U.S. come in who was like who happened to be in Lebanon. So, but yeah. unfortunately, the local scene is kind of uh, it's kind of new, so it needs a little push. Isa uh, Isa Al Muzaini. Right. He's a beast, yeah. man. You should look out for him, bro. I am looking out for him. He messaged me and he, and he was super excited that you were on the show. Now I made the connection. I don't know why he was so excited you're on the podcast. <laughs> Fortunately enough, I'm still training him online over Zoom, which is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. But uh, wow. we're managing and he's getting better. And he's blowing wow, my mind. Dude. Man, it's, it's mind blowing the connections you make with Jiu Jitsu. Right. And, and honestly, like this, this trying time of COVID opened up a new avenue. Like, 
For example, okay, just let's, as an example, I don't have 10th Planet right now in Abu Dhabi, for example. I would link up with you on Zoom and we could talk about some techniques. Like I can do a private with you to talk about some techniques and then maybe I can put my camera on the mats that I have in my garage, right? And I'd be with somebody and we can discuss positions and stuff. Like it's cool. Right. It, it opened up a possibility that didn't exist. So it's, it's definitely not the same and uh, oh, yeah. I would oh, say yeah. that it's definitely lacking big time. Mm. But then again, like you said, there's a lot of conversation that's, conversations that you can do and techniques that can go back and forth. So you yes. can get ideas through pretty well. So I think we're fortunate enough to be able to do that. I mean, like, look at it. For example, I've never trained any 10th Planet technique with a 10th Planet person. Right. Talking to you alone is expanding my jujitsu game. As we're talking right now, I'm understanding like, shit, okay, cool. The posture is the problem. And I have that. My game is closed guard, by the way. Like one of my strong games is closed guard. And whenever they posture up, I follow them usually to go for kimuras to like, Sweet. I don't stay, hip I don't bumps. stay down. Yeah, hip bumps or just to reach, to trouble their neck to make them push me back down. But what you're doing is, like if I can actually find a way to pin them down without having to follow them. No, Hell no, yeah, why not? It's easy, it can be done. You just need mm. the right techniques. I like it. I like it. So, so when you had those seminars with these American guys and they saw Lebanon, they saw for them, uh, how was it interacting with Lebanese people? How was it uh, teaching them? Were they responsive to this uh, system? They loved it, honestly. Uh, a big part of my students were up there. So how okay. I do my class and how they kind of run the seminars were kind of similar. So it was okay. on back and forth. But uh, their experience to come to Lebanon for the first time and interact with like the locals, the culture, yes. the everything. So they loved it. They loved Lebanon, and I think like uh, they could, they took it back with them to the U.S. You know, they talked about it. They uh, they shared pictures. They talked about yeah. the food, about the beach. Dude, where did you take them? Like extracurricular, like some places that you wanted to show off. I took them to Baalbek. I took them oh. to. You know the old Roman temples? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Took them to the beach in Batroun. So we okay. went to a couple of places. I showed them all, all around Lebanon. To Beirut, of course, the heart of the city. Yeah. Any nightlife? Uh, honestly, we didn't have the chance to do so because they were here on like a tight couple of days. Oh, okay. But uh, I promised them next trip. <laughs> yeah, because I figured they'd go ape shit for the nightlife in yeah. Lebanon. Like Just Marm Khayal alone just that night would have been That's something for them. We did, it's, we did walk by, we did go okay. in and out. Like, we never stuck around too much in the place. I see, man. I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm heartbroken for what happened. I miss Lebanon so much. We, we got into a habit of going there every year, at least twice. Yeah. But um, hopefully, hopefully it recovers quick from this and the people, you know, get out of this stronger. Usually, like, this is the sad thing, but it's the truth. Right. There's a reason Lebanon is this unique, like, uh, mixture of people. Right? It's because you've gone through so much shit that you found ways to work it out and be together. And, and the more shit you go through as people, as let's say nations, okay, history, the closer they become. And I hope this uh, does that to Lebanon. Okay. So it's definitely been hard on everybody and uh, it's still new, right? So a lot yeah. of people are losing interest in the subject, but in my eyes, I feel like people should keep talking about it and the message yeah. should yeah. be out there everywhere. But uh, like you said, Lebanese people, they've been through a lot and uh, mm. they always come together and they always rise above everything that happens. So yeah. I hope that happens in the near, in the near future. You know, uh, here, here's where my faith is in jujitsu. Okay, like Lebanese people, like they've got amazing music talent. They've got amazing architecture talent. Like the, there's people all around the world in every industry at the pinnacle that are Lebanese. Marufin. But uh, for, for the young generation boys and girls, I think they need a kind of like, uh, and I don't want to say jujitsu solves all the fucking problems of the world <laughs> because we always say that shit. But like, for example, an MMA fighter that comes out of Lebanon that gets fame in Western mainstream media, it gets people behind him. It gets them dis like focused on something bigger than just fighting and hating and religion and shit. It gets them health, working out, gym. When you do that, you're a lot better. You're a lot nicer as a person, contrary to what most people think. I think it's... It's a very important route, man, to develop. Me too. And uh, I feel like that's one extreme, right? The professional athlete that's going about and doing it. Mm. But then again, like another part, which I really love, and we, we already said that, that uh, it just lets you meet so many different people, right? With so mm. many different backgrounds. And yeah. It's barriers. Like 
nothing else. So Absolutely. when you start connecting, when you start connecting with so many different people, with so many different backgrounds, yeah. who knows what opens up and what opportunities arise. That's true. That's very true. Did you ever go to the States to train? Never. I've never been to the States, but... Uh, Whoa. You know, visas are hard. <laughs> bro, so you've got the gi and you've got the States. There's a lot of things going for you, bro. You have a very bright future. <laughs> um, so, like, uh, if you don't mind me asking, like, were, you studied in Lebanon. You studied in American schools because your accent is very American. An English school. So okay. it was in Lebanon. I think you already know that... Uh, Half the population is either English educated or French educated. Yes. I was toward the English side and uh, just traveling throughout the years and meeting so many people. That, okay. Yeah. Where did you travel for Jiu Jitsu? Mainly, than... mainly Singapore, Thailand, and Netherlands, and Amsterdam. Uh, so uh, you, you hung out with Ahmad, right? Right. Ahmad, Ahmad is uh, also an amazing person, him and Rahul. They run nice. down at Amsterdam. So again, the beauty of it, you just go there, you meet these amazing people, yes. killers on the mat, right? And mm. then it's a beautiful thing what they have. They have uh, the Amsterdam Jiu-Jitsu camp coming up in around two weeks. Oh, okay. So they always bring in a bunch of high-level black belts. Eddie Bravo was there last year and I was there and I got, I got the chance to see Eddie, Jeremiah, Gio, everybody was there. Listen, you're a smart man when you open a 10th planet in Amsterdam because you know what the fuck you're doing, right? You know, the guy that created the system is a pothead, right? So you know what the hell you're doing. And like, there's a big chance Joe Rogan might join because <laughs> of the location. So like, I definitely want to get Ahmad on the show. Uh, I have a lot to ask him. So an another question, I asked you this off, off uh, the air, but I, I want to ask you now. Uh, so... <laughs> Is there a tattoo requirement to the 10th planet system? <laughs> no, it's not there. I have oh, it. I, I need see. a couple more to look like, uh, what was his name? What did you say? Man, th there's so many. Geo. Uh, <laughs> th th there's, who are the famous ones with the tattoo? Geo is like fully tatted yeah, out, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, Eddie Bravo. Joe Rogan. They're all tattooed. Right. What's your tattoo? Is it jujitsu related? No, it's, uh, it's his person tattoo between, between me and the uh, my dad. <laughs> okay, that's cool. That's cool. All right. We'll let that one slide. But the next one has to be jujitsu. <laughs> I have a plan for this big sleeve that I want. So let's see how that works out. Oh, man. But listen, here, here's, here's my thought on this. And hear me out. Before you do a jujitsu tattoo, I see Gordon Ryan and he yeah. has jujitsu here, right? And I'm thinking, but are you really doing jujitsu? Like it should have been grappling, <laughs> right? All right. So again, that, that's you throwing the no gi out mm. of jiu-jitsu, right? Mm. That's you taking MMA, jiu-jitsu, and gi, and then saying that no gi is grappling and it's not jiu-jitsu anymore. True, true. Now, that's the thing. It's so funny because you know what? In the end, we're not doing jiu-jitsu. Okay, I, I hate to... This, this is going to be a shitstorm. He's saying, but we're not doing jiu-jitsu. We're doing judo newaza, right? Let's be frank. It's just the, the Brazilians, they're like, oh, jiu-jitsu. <laughs> so, but everything's changed over the years, right? So... Let's see. It, it has, it has. So that's why, like, I'm telling you, the name, it has to be, like, maybe 10th Planet, maybe something to do with that. No, 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 not something like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So if your parents are watching, I'm sorry for giving him any ideas. <laughs> um, but, but here's the thing. I, I definitely see so much potential between, like, the GCC countries in the very near future. Um, do you see any potential for events in Lebanon, submission events? So honestly, this is something that I was working on before the pandemic hit. Oh. I, uh, after the seminar, I realized that people want to do jiu-jitsu, but for whatever reason, they're not seeing a future in it in Lebanon, or they're not testing themselves enough. Like It doesn't happen yeah. as often as you'd like, right? Yeah. So I tried to host my own tournament, and I called it Grapplers Club Lebanon. So mm -hmm. I did the first one, which was supposed to be just for white belts, submission only, EBI, and okay. then a small entrance fee, and then there's a bigger cash prize for the winners. So this, this is just for white belts. But then the pandemic hit, and then oh, things shut down, right? Dude, uh, that, that's, it's, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Like this pandemic, it's, it's hurting a lot of businesses, okay. but I'm, I'm an optimist. I have a feeling we're gonna come out of this with a lot of people desperate, you know, because 
I've seen more people get into fitness in the last four months than I have my entire life. Definitely. You know? People are, especially when they're locked up at home, right? They, mm. they need something to vent. They need something to do. They need oh, to yeah. let uh, the stress out, the frustration out. And uh, sports, yeah. whether it's jujitsu, martial arts, boxing, whatever it is, it's, it's pretty effective. Here, here's a very interesting train of thought, right? I'm, I, I like evolutionary theory. I like history. So wrestling, grappling is the oldest form of combat between mankind, right? right. Before any martial arts, anything was grappling, right? So um, I believe that humans have always had a need for close touch and close contact. Our, our microbiomes, like our biology is designed to be in close contact with other people. When you're away from other people, first you get psychological problems, and then you get physical problems when you're reintegrated, your immune system is shit. Right. So I think that uh, we definitely need to find our way back. And I think jujitsu and grappling does something to you. It's not just endorphins from training. It's not that. It does something on a psychological and a biological level that makes you healthy. And if people can really figure this out, they will be running to the gyms. I agree, man, because what I think is uh, the pressure that comes with jujitsu, and especially if you want to get good and progress over the years, like as we all know, it doesn't happen overnight, right? You need to yeah. put in the time, you need to put in the math time, you mm -hmm. need the trial and error, and there's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of error. And uh, after that experience and that pressure and that stress, things seem to, you know, you have this problem solving mentality where it helps you and yeah. you take it out with you to your life. That, that's where it is, man. I have a question. Um, have you competed against somebody who does not come from a 10th planet background? I'm sure you have. Yeah, so I've done a couple of grappling industries and in Naga. So nice. first time I competed internationally, right? I went to Naga Europe, mm -hmm. European Championships. I had my purple belt. And I registered for the experts division. Oh boy. Right? And I never knew that the purple belts and the brown belts and the black belts were all mushed up together. Oh, so no. I land in Amsterdam and okay. I figured that out. Like I'm reading the rule books and I see this. And I get really excited about this, right? And I'm shocked about this. And then I see that the first guy I'm competing against is uh, Jiu Jitsu black belt, Judo black belt, et cetera, et cetera, <laughs> okay. right? And then, interesting. So different styles that's that's the cool part i caught him with uh it was a move that was i caught him by surprise with right had i not have that yes surprise move i may have lost that match but it was there man this is what i wanted to talk exactly what i wanted to bring up is it like having a cheat code because so many people don't train 10th planet and compete you went in against the black belt judo black belt jujitsu and what did you catch him with uh so it's called the flight trap jeremiah okay. that has done it a bunch of times and okay uh, it's cool honestly it was the first time i've ever done that move in competition i've never wow. done it in the gym before so i just snapped you've never done it in training right i've never done it in the gym i've seen jeremiah vance do it a couple of times on instagram <laughs> and rubber guard assassins and then oh, it just man. clicked in the gym you, you and me have a lot in common then we just pull out the craziest shit at the worst times ah zid the yeah. audios can you hear me? It's showing okay here. Let's just wait a bit. I think the internet uh, had a hiccup. Everything's fine on my side. Can you hear me? Oh, no. Oh, no. I want to know more about this fly trap. Yeah. Can you see me? I can't hear you. I'm very sorry, but I don't know what's going on. All right, wait. Let wait. me try something. Uh, can you see me? Oops. <laughs> All right, let's wait a bit. Can you hear me now? Uh, what yeah. do I do? Wait, can you, can you see me? Okay, hold on. Stop video. Mute. Uh, can you hear me now? Hello. Unmute. Audio. Can you hear me now? All right, I think you're Test. back. Can you hear me? Nope. One second. No. Nah. Can you hear me now? Ew. Can you hear me? Hmm. Hi, everybody watching on YouTube. We're going to figure this out real quick. I have no idea what's going on. 
Um, let me see. See? Yep. Can you hear me? Or can you see me? How can I tell him? Can, I, I guess he can't see me. Can you see me? Hmm. All right. Um, I have no idea what just happened. Hold on. Can't see me. All right, hold up. <laughs> I'm gonna try to figure this out. Why you can't see me? Um, maybe if you leave uh, the um, the Zoom and come back. Hope you guys are enjoying this over there. Enjoying this little hiccup. <laughs> All right, hold up. I'm gonna try to figure this out. Why you can't see me? Um, maybe if you leave uh, the uh, the Zoom and come back. All right, let's give it a second, boys. Ah, this has been happening the last two times. Who's your output? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, okay. That was the mistake. All right, we figured it out. <laughs> it wasn't his problem. It was from my side. We got this now. Admit. All right. I think we're okay. Can you hear me? Am I back? You're back. Am I? No. What the hell? Let me let me try one more thing. Zay. Huh. Super strange, bro. All right. So maybe it's not on my side. So how are you guys doing? You guys want me to ask any questions? 10th planet related since we're starved like in the Middle East I think Dubai has a 10th planet now and there's one in Beirut is there any other 10th planet that you guys know of uh-huh okay hey hey can you hear me is this back is this good I can see you can you see me the audio is no? way off weird man weird that's the second time this happens okay hold up hold up wait can you see me? No? You can't even see me? <laughs> see you. Yeah, you. Okay, so you can... Can you hear me now? And it's Shit. laggy. Shit. It's super laggy. All right. Wait. <laughs> Damn it. Sorry, man. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Uh, I got to figure this out somehow. Hold up. Is it from my end though or yours? Because I tried Wi-Fi and I tried 3G. Okay. Mm. probably me probably me i'm not sure um everything on my side shows that it's working yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes i hear it. test 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 shit is it stabilizing at all on my side it's fine i have Okay, my connection is unstable. All right, hold on, hold on, boys. We're going to figure this out. We're going to figure this out. Wait. Oh. Please work. <laughs> okay, okay, I think I'm fine. I think we're okay. Please tell me this worked. Can you hear me now? Talal, you there, bro? Are you there? Can you hear me? Sorry, man. Nothing. Oh, my goodness. I apologize, everybody. I'm going to try to figure this out. Um, okay. Sorry, Habibi. I have no idea what happened. Um, Everything on my side so shows it's working, but I got the something to do with my internet connection being unstable. So just give me a few moments. Yeah, everything was working fine. I apologize for everybody watching. Hmm. It's the only problem with doing things online. Because like my YouTube is working, right? And can you guys hear me on YouTube? Somebody type in chat. Can you guys hear me?
Fuck YouTube ad on my own channel. Oh no. Oh no. Oh shit, there's no there's no audio even for you guys on YouTube. Okay, no, there is audio. Very strange. Only thing I can do. It will be edited out. Don't worry, guys. I'll fix this. Copy invite link. All right. Sent him a, I opened up Zoom again. This should work. Bear with us, people. <sighs> Stupid technology. You can do it, Talal. Yes. I hope this works. Uh huh? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Finally, dude. Oh my goodness. I have uh, no idea what happened, man. Yeah, me I think, either. I don't know if it was from my end or yours, but I'm sorry. It was, it was definitely from my side. I think it was Zoom. Because like, oh. I had to close the meeting and open a new meeting for it to work. That's the first time this happens. Right. Yeah, laddie. Um, so, where were we? We were talking about 10th um, Planet uh, plans for Lebanon, about submission grappling events. Right, so I was just trying out a new tournament, right? And then yeah, COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, it gets back on track. Okay. So, what I wanted to tell you about, though, like I said, perfect timing was uh, we're in the process of opening up our own gym. So, uh, that will allow me to devote even more time to Jiu Jitsu, right? So, yes. it's going to be like my baby. So, I'm excited so, so for that. What were you doing before? You were training where? So when I first came back to Lebanon and I had plans for 10th Planet, mm -hmm. I wanted to do it, but I didn't have a place to train. I okay. didn't have a gym. I didn't have the money for a gym. I needed to cover the affiliation costs. So there was all these barriers that I had to overcome, right? So sure. I went up to TriStar and we made like a mutual agreement and I was training at TriStar Gym Lebanon for first year. Is, how, how long has TriStar been in Lebanon? Honestly, I can't tell you exactly because I think like uh, a couple of years after I started MMA or even maybe before, okay. but uh, it's probably been here since maybe 2012, earlier. That's... I'm not sure. So that's cool of them. They like, they helped you get started out with what you're doing, right? You're teaching, you're instructing right. the classes? Yeah, I was instructing the classes, the fight team, and uh, it was a great experience. It was a great learning experience, but... Uh, with mm. all the changes that are happening in the world and in the country, yeah. I needed a little more flexibility and a little more uh, independence to kind of run things my way. Okay. So now what is the plan? You opened up a gym in Beirut or? So we're in the process of setting up a new place. Uh, okay. I've been looking at different places for the past couple of months and uh, we just nailed it down to the right spot with the right person. And Very cool. We're teaming up with people who are big into strength and conditioning and also nice. have future plans for sports and uh, yeah, so so, so more than more than just jujitsu, you're planning on other martial arts. No, so it's just gonna be jujitsu, but at the same yeah. time, I don't want to stop my MMA training, so I'm probably ah. gonna have my team around that. Very cool, very cool. And is it gonna be called Tenth Planet Beirut or Tenth Planet Beirut? Awesome. So w when are you expecting like to be able to? So this? I'm hoping maybe by November we open up. Okay. And um, how do people sign up? How they should reach you for the moment? Right, is it on so Instagram? There's Ten Plan Beirut on Instagram. My phone okay. number is there. My email number is there. You can okay. message me anytime. And uh, everything goes through me, right? So 
Like yes. I said, what I've been doing is I just want people to get into jujitsu, and everybody who wants to do that, I'd yeah. love to have a conversation with them, get to meet them, get a chance to train with them. Yep, yep, man. Uh, I, I, hopefully, when things clear up and the world starts functioning a bit normally, let's set up. I'm being very serious. I'm going to talk to all the guys that are involved around oh, Lebanon. Oh. And whoever's into it, let's set up a seminar, a super seminar in Lebanon and have yeah. fun. Get everybody training with everybody. Who gives a shit? They're Just to have great. fun. They're all great. I've yeah. uh, trained with Daniel a couple of times. He's Amazing. awesome. So yeah, everybody's, everybody in Lebanon that's into jujitsu and uh, into promoting the sport and growing it, they're all yeah. doing an awesome job, right? So we just have to work together and elevate the sport. All right, very cool. So uh, this brings me to my uh, important question because uh, the future of jujitsu, as much as I, oh no, please, no. Can you hear me? Okay, now it's not on my side. I swear to God, if it's on my side, I'm going <laughs> to throw my laptop out the window. What the hell? Hmm. It's one of those days, boys. I want to ask him about 10th Planet for kids. If it's kids friendly. Ah, he left and he came back by mistake. Okay. We have... Hopefully, man. Hopefully, this is the last interruption. Like I said, we're good okay. on the electricity for now. Yes, <laughs> yes. You can hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you? Fuck it. Yeah, man, I'm good. I, I, my heart is stopped. I'm like, nah. Dude, <laughs> What's going it's on? Just, that's what you have to deal with in Lebanon. Just constant. <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. It keeps it interesting, man. It keeps people on chat tuned in to yeah, see yeah. The, the shit. It's real. <laughs> it's very real. That's podcasting. That's why I love it. Listen, I, I, I wanted to ask you something. Now, aside from wearing like skeleton rash guards and all this crazy stuff, is 10th Planet kids friendly? Yeah, man. So a lot of uh, bigger gyms, I would say, people who bigger tenth planets who are already established, they already have their own kids programs and uh, they're doing wonders, right? You see these yeah. younger people who... So for kids, I think it's even cooler because kids, as you know, they already have that flexibility. They already have that uh, oh, yeah. creative touch. So you just make sure they never lose it. That's so true, man. Like I see my son, all right? He's four years old. And like when we're, I do some jujitsu with him to get him into I've seen, it. I've seen, I've seen the video. Man, but like he does shit. I look at him like, man, I wish I could do that. Like he's doing things yeah, that I, there's no way. It's way gone beyond my time. You're so right. Um, but I, I think, and I hope time proves me right, is with Lebanon and especially this region, there's an appeal to 10th planet style and fashion, if you know what I'm talking about. The same yeah. way there's an appeal to wearing a kimono and a belt. Right. So it's a little different, right? And uh, that's, what, that's what captivated me when I first started with it. It was just the system was there, the rubber guard, lockdown, yeah. all these crazy terminolo terminology that you could use to kind of uh, keep your memory going. To, yes. It was cool, man. It dragged me into it. And uh, I can see a lot of people doing the same. Yeah. And, and you know, like what I taught kids, right, for a while. And the, the first struggle you face with new children is they don't like to keep the gi on. I agree. Right? And it kind of makes sense. Like you, I feel weird telling them, no, you have to keep it on. It's like, why? <laughs> you know, you're teaching me self-defense, right? I'm not going to be wearing this in school. Right. And you look at them like, you got a point, bitch. <laughs> but <laughs> the, gi, the gi is where you lose a lot of people to jiu-jitsu. And then if you take yeah. it off, you might lose the couple of people that are into the gi. But you might gain the hundreds and thousands that are not into it. Yeah, I, I definitely see it as a big win for kids. It's like an entryway into jujitsu, and if they choose to go the gi route, they could afterwards. But for for their younger years, I believe, let's say from the ages of six to ten, I think, I hope, but starting with no gi might actually be better for them. Yeah. So what I like about the gi is the basics and the the you know the fundamentals, the structures which are mm. there in gi and in no gi. Yeah. Maybe the gi slows things down a little for them so that they grasp the game a little better. Yeah. But uh, no gi definitely gives them that real aspect to it right away. Right. So mm. it it makes it feel martial arty, right? right? It gives them that 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 sense. But still, I'm. I'm excited to see how it works out with you in Lebanon. I really wish you all of the best with it. Um, Thank you. 
Do you have plans on coming and competing in the UAE? Uh, I would love to, honestly. I would love to go to the UAE, train in the UAE, train with you, okay. train with everybody that's there. I'd love to have you. Uh, yeah. Like I told you, they just opened up a 10th Planet Dubai, yes. run by Jake Tapia, who's uh, also doing great things. So would love to just go around, meet everybody who's into jiu-jitsu in the region, UAE, yeah. Middle East. Yeah. That's I feel like sport. I feel like no-gi is also growing in the UAE, right? We have no-gi competitions. They're not as... Uh, like there's not as much attention given to them right but the scene is growing jake lives in dubai now uh yes ah interesting if i'm not mistaken because he's the one that's running 10th planet dubai very interesting man dubai uh there's all of the names now almost there's gracie baja there's hoist gracie now there's 10th planet in Nogueira. well it's a big hub it's a big hub in the middle east and uh, it's needed it's doing its job and uh It's yeah. amazing. It's, it's an amazing place where a lot of people in the jiu-jitsu community can just meet up, compete, train. That's right, so, man. That's right. It's, it's good that we have that hub. It's just we need to make use of it, right? Between right. what I'm trying to do is like link up everybody. But we also, each of us, each academy needs to take a step forward and reach out to the academies around. Because, man, like it, it's, it's, uh, we're way better off in terms of population numbers and size of the region in comparison to just the U.S., Right? You see in the U.S., the guy opens up a gym. No, this area is mine. But when you work with all of the gyms around you and stuff, you increase the amount of people into jiu-jitsu. We can do super events and get a lot of people together. So let's start planning shit, man. Let's re- reach out to each exactly, other. Man. I, I, I'm, I'm just, excited for it. The, the world is going to open up soon enough. And then once it yeah. does, I have no doubt people are going to be inclined to travel more to meet cool. different people. And then within the jiu-jitsu community, that's better because you get to meet sure. people who are in the same circles as you. For sure, man, for sure. Now, I wish you all the best, brother. I'm so happy I got you on this podcast to talk. I appreciate and- it so much, man. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm coming down to Lebanon as soon as I can and we're going to train. You're going to teach me how the hell I can awesome, truly I'm surprise all my guys. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much, brother. Everybody on YouTube, I apologize for what happened. It gets skipped and yeah, stuff, but I'll edit it out. Guys. All good, man. All good. I'll edit it out on the video and uh, the audio podcast I'll be posting right after this. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Much love. Hang in there, Habibi. Hang in there. We'll catch Have you guys on the evening. next podcast. All right.